And at number 10, we have the gulper eel. As you might imagine, this scary looking eel has an extremely large mouth that they use to swallow their prey whole. If that's not terrifying enough, the gulper eel is so adapted to eating large objects that its mouth and stomach can even expand further to accommodate food. There's actually not a lot known about this creature because, well, they live 3,000 meters below the surface, but from my own observations, I'm not a scientist or anything, but I can tell that I never want to come face to face with these guys. Apparently they can grow up to six feet long, which is not okay. And they have extremely long tails that they use like a whip in order to move through the water fast. Sangletooth comes onto this list at number nine. Take a look at this nasty underbite. Quick, someone call the orthodontist because this thing needs to be fixed ASAP. Well, as it turns out, the snaggletooth fish uses his underbite to his advantage in order to kill his prey. These creepy fish can grow up to two feet long and they live in the deepest parts of the ocean. So scientists are still trying to discover more information about them. All we know for certain is they have sharp hooked teeth and they use this to snag their prey. Evolution really helped them out because in the deep sea, food is pretty scarce so you need every advantage that you can get. And you know what, note to self, stay away from the deep sea. And now at number eight, we're talking about the viper fish. These nightmarish fish live at depths of up to 2,800 meters and they are mainly found in tropical waters. Thankfully, they are rarely seen by humans, so so we're safe, safe for now. One of their organs lights up, which is so cool, which actually protects the viper fish from other predators that are moving below them. The light also helps to attract prey and they use it to communicate with mates and rivals. Now let's talk about their teeth. Their teeth are unusually large and when it hunts in the dark, their large teeth help to grab and hold onto their prey so they have no chance of escaping. And when they catch a larger prey, they can swallow them by rotating their skull. The viper fish is one of the most fiercest predators in the deep sea. And the scary part of them is once they bite into you, it will be too late and there's nothing that you can do. Making our way into number seven, we have the giant spider crab. I mean, no thanks to this. Normally, I wouldn't consider crabs to, as like, you know, something that is scary, but there's exceptions to everything. And there's an exception to this. This giant crab has super long legs and huge pincers. These guys are one of the largest crabs in the world. And lucky for us, they live at the bottom of the ocean. These crabs can weigh up to 44 pounds and they have a leg span of about 13 feet. I mean, we're talking about their leg. Is this real life right now? I'm officially scared for life. Nothing should be that big. Oh, and get this, they will eat just about anything, including corpses. And even though these crabs are massive, they're extremely good at camouflaging their enormous bodies. And now let's talk about the razor sharp claws. They're able to move pretty fast and they're able to kill other smaller animals with ease. Their claws are so strong and large enough to pry open muscles and clamps. So keeping that in mind, can you imagine what they can do to a human Terrible Claw Lobster brings us to number six. This thing looks like they came straight out of a horror movie. The Terrible Claw Lobster has one really long, scary looking claw that kind of looks like a chainsaw, or maybe that's just me. This creature was discovered in 2010, so fairly recently, and it was found 250 meters below the surface in the waters in the Philippines. Am I the only one that's concerned that we've only discovered this thing nine years ago? What else is living in the water that we don't know about? Thankfully, these lobsters only grow up to three centimeters. So they're, they're fairly small, although they probably look big in pictures right now. So his long tooth claw might be the only thing terrifying about him. Even though this lobster is, you know, relatively tiny, I wouldn't want to be pinched by his razor sharp claw. I'm pretty sure he can amputate my big toe if he really wanted to. Number five, we have the sarcastic fringe head. And believe me, I'm not being sarcastic about his name. This terrifying creature can open its mouth insanely wide so that he can easily devour his prey. The sarcastic fringe head fish lives off of the Pacific coast of North America and they are extremely temperamental.
They are fierce territorial creatures that will aggressively protect their homes. Whenever they sense danger, they will open up their enormous mouths and show their needle-like teeth in order to defend themselves. At first, they will give you a warning by flexing and snapping their jaw, but if their enemy ignores the warning, they won't hesitate to use their ferocious teeth to attack. Chimera takes us to number four, also known as ghost sharks, ratfish, or spookfish. This strange looking creature with the really strange names, well they live deep in the oceans and scientists believe that they are some of the oldest fish to have ever lived. I mean take a look at this picture right here, they have huge dark eyes, they look like they are staring directly into my soul and your guys' soul right now. They kind of look like a robot or mechanical. Most chimeras live deep in the water which makes them very hard to study. But what we do know is is that they have three pairs of tooth plates that protrude from the mouth like a rat. Oh, and their teeth are extremely effective at grinding shells so they can easily eat their prey. Let's just say that I'm happy that chimeras aren't interested in humans, but I guess they can evolve and things can change. And yeah, I'm like, I'm like nervous laughing right now. Number three, we're talking about the tongue-eating louse. This thing is actually super disgusting. Well, let me explain what this gross monster does. First, this creature will enter a fish through its gills. Then it will change sex while living in a parasite within the fish. And then it will attach itself to the fish's tongue. It sucks out all of the blood on the fish's tongue until the tongue just falls off. I don't even know what to do with that information. That is absolutely terrifying and now I'm gonna have nightmares about these gross little creatures crawling in through my nose and like sucking the blood off of my tongue and I'm probably gonna have nightmares about my tongue falling off. Someone in Belfast bought a fish from a supermarket and when she went to prepare dinner she noticed a large parasite in its mouth. I'm pretty sure I'd never eat another fish in my lifetime if I saw this in person. The woman actually took the fish back to the store to get a refund. And before you start jumping, you know, to conclusions here, the tongue eating louse doesn't pose a risk to humans, but I'd still be pretty traumatized if this happened to me. Northern Stargazer takes the number two spot. If you're planning on a scuba diving vacation, you might want to consider getting your money back. On this list, we've seen a lot of hideous and scary looking fish, and the Northern Stargazer is no exception to that. Judging by the name, this fish sounds pretty docile and friendly, right? Well, think again. You guys know what you guys clicked on. This dead looking fish buries itself into the ocean floor, and it will jolt out at its prey while opening up its giant mouth in order to swallow his prey pray whole. Well, let's watch this guy in action. That fish never even stood a chance. This is actually pretty barbaric. I'm never going underwater ever again. My scuba diving vacation is canceled. Actually, I don't even have a scuba diving vacation planned. I work too much. And now, coming in at number one, we have the Goblin Shark. The Goblin Shark, I mean, what the heck is this? This is one of the oldest sharks ever, and it's often referred to as the living fossil because of it. A lot of this shark's lifestyle is completely, you know, a mystery to scientists. The largest Goblin Shark on record was 12.6 feet long, and it weighed in at 463 pounds. But it's possible that Goblin Sharks can grow much bigger than that. One of its most distinctive features is its long, flattened snout and nobody knows exactly what it's used for. But one of the most terrifying things about this shark is how they hunt. Their jaws are attached to elastic ligaments so when a prey comes close enough they can protrude their jaw which allows the shark to catapult its whole mouth forward at a distance of 8 to 9 percent of its total body weight. If humans were able to do this, we would be able to bite into a piece of food that is seven inches away. Like, just, just imagine that. Actually, it'd be pretty horrifying. 
Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the mysterious mass. When a mysterious mass washed up on shore in Indonesia, people had a lot of questions. At first, it was rumored to be the corpse of an enormous squid, which to be fair, really would be quite the sight. Locals were flocking to the area to get a glimpse at this washed up creature, which is said to have been the size of a shipping container. After more examination was done by experts, they got to the bottom of what this creature really was, and it was no squid. No, instead, this creature was actually a whale, a sperm whale to be more specific. Indonesia's Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries explained why this creature looked so far from itself when they explained the gruesome decomposition process. They said, quote, with sperm whales, when they decay, the intestines will come out through the bottom of the throat, which is striped like a pumpkin, and they become curved. So. That's gross, but at least it gives us answers to this long time mystery. In our number nine spot today, we have Double Trouble. Over in the Netherlands, this is a discovery that when it occurred, it shocked all of those who were there to see it. Two fishermen were the ones that stumbled upon this, and at first they thought they were seeing double. That is because what they found was actually a two-headed porpoise. Of course, further research was done on this animal because the fishermen knew it was rare, but I don't think they knew just how rare it really was. Experts would go on to later confirm that this was the first case of conjoined twin porpoises ever discovered. In fact, it's so shocking that this happened because it's only the tenth known within the group of sea mammals that they belong to, which is a group that includes whales and dolphins. It truly was quite a remarkable discovery, albeit probably a bit shocking when it first happened. In our number eight spot today, we have jellyfish. Back in 2017, there was a mega swarm of giant barrel jellyfish that ended up washed along the Welsh coastline. Like I'm talking about thousands of them. And these creatures can be quite large as well, growing to be about 35 inches in diameter. Many experts were shocked and had explained that they had never seen this many, especially this large before, so it was truly quite the sight to see. Experts explained that the unseasonably warm weather that was seen at the time likely boosted their numbers, and this may explain the mass quantity of them. In terms of how they ended up there, well, they were probably caught up while attempting to migrate. In our number seven spot today, we have the sea snake. Okay, so rather than after disaster, these creatures kept showing up before disaster, and it had many people thinking that perhaps they were some sort of omen, and I can totally understand why. In the Philippines, before devastating earthquakes would appear, there would be these 10 foot long creatures being referred to as sea serpents that would be found washing up on the beaches. Listen, if I found a weird huge sea snake a bunch of times before something bad happened, I would also 100% think that it had some sort of omen. It turns out that these were just ore fish, and no, they are not an omen, and no, they can't predict earthquakes or other natural disasters. In our number six spot today, we have isopods. Okay, so you know pill bugs or potato bugs or roly polies, whatever you want to call them? You know, the gross little bugs? Well, what if I told you that there's a sea creature that looks like them? And then what if I told you that sometimes this sea version grows to be like the size of a puppy? Yeah, a little unnerving and very disgusting, right? These things are actually isopods, and while most don't grow to be that large, one of the largest on record was found washed up in Indonesia. It has been nicknamed giant for obvious reasons, and was measured to be about 13 inches long. This discovery, while disgusting, also proved to be quite remarkable remarkable as it was the first giant isopod to be found in over a decade. In our number five spot today, we have the octopus anomaly. When this creature was found, it almost became someone's meal until its anomaly was realized. It was an octopus, but instead of eight arms, this one had nine. That's like a Novemo puss now. Of course, this led to the question, how does an octopus grow nine arms? Well, that has to do with their ability to regrow limbs. Like how lizards can regrow tails, octopuses have the ability to regenerate their own arms, but sometimes this process goes a little wonky. It's likely that this octopus at some point had to regrow their arm, and while that was happening, this new arm just sprouted another new one, thus the nine-armed octopus was born. Apparently, these sorts of things can happen over and over again to just one octopus. According to a 1965 study, it is said that this once gave an octopus 90 different arms. So. That's a lot. In our number four spot today, we have this unidentified creature. This creature was found on shore after the devastating 2011 tsunami that hit Japan. A survivor of this disaster was the one who found this strange creature, and while at first, from a bit of a distance, it appeared as though it could be like 
a small whale or something like that. From close up, it appeared more like a boulder or a large rock, leaving people completely baffled. In the end, especially because all of the work that experts needed to turn their focus to during this time, whatever was seen by this person wasn't fully looked into, so what it ended up being remains a bit of a mystery. There's a video of the entire ordeal species was discovered. Found in Japan, researchers were thrilled when they saw this colossal sea monster and realized that despite the heavily fished area that it came from, no one had ever found this fish before. The fish belonged to a family of fish known as slick heads, which are known for their scale-free heads and gill covers. But unlike other much smaller members of its family, this new find was a beast. The previously known members of this family usually grew to be about 14 inches in length, but this one was a massive 55 inches long and 55 pounds heavy. Another thing about this fish that made it different from its other family members is that, while slickheads are usually known for eating plankton and weak swimmers such as jellyfish, this new huge guy had evidence that showed he hunted other fish and was actually quite the predator. Despite this guy and his massive terrifying look, it was definitely an exciting day for those getting to research this newfound fish. In our number two spot today, we have a long journey. After the devastating Japan tsunami that occurred in 2011, for years after the oceans saw repercussions. Of course, this was also a disaster that carried over to land. Many, many people died, many homes and businesses were destroyed. I'm not trying to minimize or disregard the impact this tsunami had on humans. This is just a list of creatures, so that's what we're focusing on today. So basically, years after the tsunami, a whole slew of strange creatures started washing up on the shores of the Pacific Northwest and California. Some of these new creatures were even clinging to plastic debris that had been swept out to sea in the disaster. These creatures would continue to arrive year after year. We're talking shellfish, crustaceans, marine worms, sea stars, sponges, and even fish. What was alarming is that they were alive, and while that is great, some of these species are invasive and can totally throw off an entire ecosystem. It truly has been quite a time for research to see how this happened and how it affects both the animals themselves and the new area that they've been washed ashore to. In our number one spot today, we have the sea monster. Back in March of 2012, the nightmarish sea monster washed up on South Carolina shores and had people completely confused and stunned. People had truly no idea what it was and the theories of of course started swirling. Many people believed it was some sort of never before discovered sea monster and honestly I do not blame them. This thing looked weird, creepy, and I would have had no other guesses. It honestly looked like it could have been from Jurassic Park, but in the end, thankfully there are many people out there who know much more than I do, and experts were able to take the wheel and get to the bottom of this mystery. In the end, a local veterinarian was able to determine that this washed up creature was in fact the corpse of a sturgeon that was covered in scut. The reason everyone thought it was a monster is because sturgeons are huge, growing to be 800 pounds and up to 15 feet in length. In our number 10 spot today, we have the anglerfish. In case you're thinking thinking, hey, this fish looks familiar. Well, that's probably because this is the fish from Finding Nemo that almost ate Marlin and Dory after Dory sang her infamous ballad, Just Keep Swimming. Gosh, now that I've been reminded of it, you better believe that I'm gonna be singing it all night long. This aquatic fish can be found in some of the darkest spots of the ocean. The angler fish has an organ attached to the front of its head. Yes, that's right, an organ. This organ is called an S. The esca is able to emit light due to a special form of bacteria called bioluminescence. The esca organ is actually the reason that the anglerfish is able to live in the ocean about 3,300 feet, which is 583 feet more than the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world. There is supposed to be over 200 species of the anglerfish. That's 200 too many if you ask me. Next up in our number 9 spot today, we have the goblin shark. Named because it looks just like the mythical creatures and perhaps just like the HP Gringotts bank employees, but in fish form. The goblin shark has been swimming in the deepest parts of the sea for over a hundred million years, most known to be found near Japan. The goblin shark has a long snout, which is a kind of antenna, which makes it capable of sensing the minute electric fields being sent out by prey nearby. They can grow to be 12 feet long and weigh up to 460 pounds. Wow. Their fang-like teeth allows them to snap 
lap up their prey and devour it. At this point, scientists don't know too much about their behavior. However, they have concluded that they live a pretty solitary life. Next up in our number eight spot, we have the harp sponge, also known as the Chondrocladia lyra. I have to say, this sea creature is actually so satisfying to look at for some reason. Anyone else get me? It literally looks like a harp, which makes it so hard to believe that it is a living creature. This sponge-like creature is actually known for its carnivorous appetite. It actually has Velcro-like hooks on the external part of its body, and they trap copepods and other small crustaceans. They then break down its prey until it's able to be absorbed through its pores. So it sucks you in with its Velcro-like body parts and proceeds to eat you. In our seventh spot today, we have the vampire squid. Yes, a real underwater vampire. Despite its name, the vampire squid is actually neither a squid nor an octopus. Scientists have separated it into its own group, even though it is quite similar with eight arms and two tentacles. The vampire squid can grow to around 12 inches in length. Its body varies from completely jet black to red. Its name comes from its dark color, and its skin kind of resembles a cape as its skin is connected to its arms. Fun fact, if one of its arms were to be removed by, say, a predator, then it can regenerate and grow back. That's pretty cool. Coming up in our sixth spot today, we have the barrel eye fish. Okay, not going to lie, this fish looks like it's from another planet, let alone a parallel universe. It basically looks like it had a run in with the company that makes those glow in the dark bracelets. And my inner 90s baby is super happy to see this. Do kids these days still use glow in the dark bracelets? Please let me know in the comment section below. The barrel eye fish is a deep sea fish, also known as a spook fish, and it got its name because it has barrel shaped eyes with green lenses. They are known to have large fins and they're also known to have a transparent head that fills with fluid. Before 2009, scientists actually believed that they could only look up, but they have since observed that the fish can rotate its eyes forward when it's eating. That's pretty cool. The barrel eye fish is usually seen looking like it's lying down motionless. According to researchers, their transparent heads and green pigmented eyes help in filtering out the sunlight reaching their deep sea habitat. They have also been found to be in the North Pacific waters and near Baja, California and Japan. In our fifth spot today, we have the flapjack octopus. Gosh, why is it named this? Now I'm going to have to eat pancakes after this video. As delicious as its name sounds, its look instantly makes you say, better not. In fact, it looks more like a cute Pokemon, if anything, so I'm going to choose to believe that it's really a creature from a universe where Pokemon really exist and it somehow got into our universe through some underwater portal. The Flapjack Octopus is a part of the Umbrella Octopus family, known for their umbrella-like appearance during any kind of movement. It lives between 500 to 1,500 meters below the sea. They are mostly found in the Eastern Pacific Ocean with some sightings in the mid-Atlantic Ocean. They don't have a long lifespan, usually living for 1.5 to 2.5 years. The flapjack octopus eats prawns, lobsters, crayfish, shrimp, krill, crabs, to name a few. When it's ready to hunt, it flattens out its body in order to appear less threatening. The flapjack is another creature found in Finding Nemo, one of Nemo's, you know, class friends named Pearl. In our fourth spot today, we have the Dumbo octopus. As you can probably guess, its nickname came from the fact that its ears are as cute as the famous Disney character, Dumbo. The Dumbo octopus, like the flapjack, is another umbrella octopus, and it can live down to the depths of 13,100 feet, and some scientists speculate even deeper. They are inkless, unlike a lot of their cousins, and they move by slowly flapping their ears, and they use their arms to steer. Fun fact about female Dumbo octopuses, they can actually store sperm for long periods of time after mating with a male. This is to their advantage, of course, because they can then transfer sperm to the most developed eggs when it is the right time for reproducing. No comment, <laughs> but that sounds great. <laughs> they eat pelagic invertebrates that swim above the seafloor, and as such, they spend much of their lives suspended above the seafloor. In our third spot today, we have gulper eels. The gulper eel is quite terrifying to look at, and it is definitely the kind of fish that makes me slightly terrified to go swimming in the ocean. But I don't have to worry because they are in the deep sea. I only have to worry about, you know, sharks, stingrays, and stepping on a jellyfish. The gulper eel has a very distinctive trait. It has a very large mouth, and it tends to snap at its prey, similar to a snake. Its large 
large mouth and its ability to open wide allows it to eat creatures you would otherwise assume would be too big for it to eat. It has a very skinny body, long and snake-like. They are about two to three feet in length and they live in the deep, deep sea ranging from 1,600 to almost 10,000 feet below the surface. Known to be the fish of your nightmares and of course I don't disagree with this. In our second spot today we have the pelican flounder. This fish is actually found in the western Pacific and Indian Oceans. The pelican flounder makes itself as flat as possible to counter the pressure levels of the deep sea. Scientists haven't been able to observe this fish much in its natural habitat and so therefore nothing much is known. But we do know that the pelican larva, however, looks like it is from another dimension and it has a very alien-like sort of appearance. The larva are transparent and become brown as they grow into their adult form. They grow to be about 38 centimeters in length. Save the best till last. In our first spot today, we have the blobfish. Most people say that this is the ugliest fish in the world, but personally, I think the goblin shark is worse. Would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Which fish is uglier? The blobfish, the goblin shark, or let's throw in the anglerfish too, because that's another gross one. The blobfish has been described to look like a half-melted human reduced to nothing more than a bubble. That is the perfect description of it. It also kind of reminds me of slime, but living. This fish can be found living in the deep sea of the coast of Australia and New Zealand. It is said to be residing in about 2,000 and 3,900 feet deep. Apparently the only reason it looks like the way that it does is because of depressurization damage done while bringing the animal to the surface. It looks like a fairly normal fish though at the bottom of the ocean. The blobfish has an extremely long lifespan of 130 years. It weighs about 20 pounds and it's about 12 inches long. They have no teeth, no skeleton, and they don't spend much energy moving around. So basically their name is quite fitting. The mastodon tramples onto this list at number 10. Mastodons were famous for their long, curved, and dangerous looking tusks. They went extinct about 11,000 years ago, shortly after the last ice age. Their average body size was around 7 foot 7 inches for females and large males measured in at about 9 feet 2 inches in height. They most likely went extinct from a combination of climate change, increased competition for food sources, and possibly hunting by early humans. Thankfully for us, they are plant eaters and showed no interest in eating humans. So don't worry, you'll still rest peaceful tonight knowing that if scientists do bring these animals back to life, we're gonna be okay. The woolly mammoth barges onto this list at number nine. These creatures were closely related to today's modern Asian elephants. Elephants have become my favorite animals. They're very intelligent beings. They were around four meters tall and weighed approximately six tons. Because we have a lot of mammoth corpses that are so well preserved, scientists have been able to extract their DNA. So in theory, we would be able to clone the woolly mammoth and bring them back from extinction. But you know what, I'm not sure how I would feel about this because they are absolutely massive. And what if we can't tame them? And now at number eight, we have the Tasmanian tiger. Before researching for this list, I had no idea that these things ever existed. I've heard of the Tasmanian devil, but not the Tasmanian tiger. These creatures predominantly hunted at night and their prey includes kangaroos, wallabies, small mammals, and birds. Hopefully we're not considered small mammals. Well, apparently they would chase after their prey over long distances, slowly tiring them out. And then without warning, they would sprint and grab their victims by the neck. They were able to open up their jaws to about 120 degree angle and sometimes they would even hop around on two legs. I mean, what a weird animal. They eventually died out in the 1930s, but that's not stopping scientists from one day bringing them back from the dead to live amongst us. Number seven, we have the Irish elk. This animal was one of the largest deer to ever walk on the earth. It's suspected that these animals roamed the earth about 7,700 years ago in Siberia and our current red deer or fallow deer might have some similar genes to the Irish elk. They stood at a height of about 7 feet tall and their massive antlers measured in at a whopping 12 feet long. I mean, is this real life right now? Those humongous antlers probably did some serious damage back in the day. Well, not really. Apparently their antlers weren't the best in battle, it was mainly used as a way to attract the ladies. In either case, I think the Irish elk would give our current moose a run for their money. Unless it's a Canadian moose. Canadian mooses are extremely large. For those of you guys who are scared of birds, you might want to take cover because in at number six, we have the moa. These guys were flightless birds that lived in New Zealand. 
They went extinct about 700 years ago, which is actually pretty recent if you think about it. But now scientists believe that they are getting very close to bringing these large birds back from the dead. The moa were extremely tall. They measured in at about 12 feet and weighed over a ton. I mean, what the heck did these guys eat? I need to get on this moa diet when I'm ready to put on some serious muscle gains. They were also very swift runners. They were able to defend themselves by kicking whenever they got cornered. Thankfully, they mainly ate seeds, fruits, leaves, and grass. So you know what? I'd gladly welcome these guys back if we managed to bring them back from extinction. But I know a few people who are scared of birds who would probably want to stop this from happening altogether. Caspian tigers crawl onto our list at number five. These creatures used to be located in Turkey and Central Asia, but they went extinct in the 1960s, so not that long ago. They were known to be aggressive hunters that preyed on wild boar, red deer, and domestic animals such as dogs and cattle. There are some scientists that want to bring back the Caspian tigers by reintroducing the nearly identical Siberian tiger to its old habitats, where they are expecting it to adapt. Up next on our list, number four, we're talking about the woolly rhinoceros. These huge beasts became extinct at the end of the most recent ice age. The woolly rhino was a massive animal. He had two large horns near the front of his skull, and he was covered with a thick coat of hair that made it ideal for him to live in harsh climates. Humans are being blamed for their extinction, so I guess scientists want to reintroduce them back into the environment, you know, to make up for it. But the real question is, what kind of impact would reintroducing the woolly rhinoceros have on our animals living today? I'm not sure if it would be in anyone's best Best interest to bring them back from the dead because we bring them back from the dead what animal species do they totally eliminate and now number three we have the Siberian unicorn I guess unicorns really did exist I kid you not except they didn't look like the typical white horse that you know we see in fairy tale books so let's take a look at what this thing looks like. Here it is right here. The Siberian unicorn lived up until 39,000 years ago. They were 1.9 meters tall, about four meters long, and weighed in more than four tons. These massive creatures probably went extinct due to the drastic climate change, lots of vegetation, and of course, human hunting. But just like the other creatures on our list, scientists believe that they can potentially bring back this animal and reintroduce them into its natural habitat. But I'm thinking that the Siberian unicorn is probably better off staying extinct I don't think that they would be able to live in our current environmental conditions I mean why would we want them to suffer haven't we already done enough damage saber-toothed tiger makes it onto our list at number two now this would be so cool these beasts had canine teeth that were 11 inches long with fine serrated fangs but oddly enough these scary looking teeth were actually pretty brittle and they would easily break during combat but that doesn't make them any less scarier the saber-toothed tiger had a very very specialized hunting skill. They would strategically pounce on their prey from trees and plunge their teeth into their prey's neck and then they would wait for their prey to just bleed to death. We actually have some of their fossils in our possession and scientists might be able to use it to clone them in the future. But why would scientists want to bring this animal back to life? I mean, that is one of the biggest mysteries. Topping our list at number one, we have the Neanderthals. About 45,000 years ago, Homo sapiens lived alongside Neanderthals who had their own society, tools, and cultural practices. They most likely went extinct due to competition for resources, climate change, disease, or a combination of all those things. However, with our recent advancements with the genetic technologies, Neanderthals could possibly make a return to our civilization. Scientists are proposing that they can use gene editing tools and DNA sequences to bring them back to life. But it's also important to note that we would not be bringing back a perfect copy of a Neanderthal, and I think it would be unethical to bring them back. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think it's awesome that de-extinction could be something that happens in our lifetime, but we also have to be very careful. I mean, we all saw what happened in Jurassic Park. They were able to bring back the dinosaurs, but was that a good idea? I don't think so. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Illipica. The Illipica is a species of mammal that are endemic to northwest China. They are quite small but incredibly adorable. They are about 7 to 8 inches long and their preferred habitat is on bare sloping rock, which is what makes their home in the Tian Shan mountain range the perfect place for them. Unfortunately, there's only about a thousand of these little guys left as their population has declined by 70% since 1983. The main culprit for the population decline is climate 
climate change as it has forced these animals higher and higher up into the mountains where it's harder for them to survive. In our number 9 spot today we have the colossal squid. The colossal squid is a real creature that is not to be confused with the giant squid which is similar but slightly smaller. These guys live in the darkest, coldest depths surrounding the waters of Antarctica. This creature lives up to its name as it reaches an average of 46 feet in size and weighs around 500 kilograms with the females being the largest of the species. They also have large tentacles equipped with suckers that have little razor hooks on them to better latch onto its prey, so let's hope it's not you. Its diet mainly consists of large fish, such as the 7 foot Patagonian toothfish, and small ones as well, but some even consume their own kind. But they've also been known to try and consume larger prey like sperm whales who often have been seen with scars attributing to the battles they must have faced. They're colossal, they're scary, and they're ambitious. What more could you want from a scary sea monster? Only two specimens have ever been collected with the second one being found recently in 2014. If you have ever wondered where the tales of the kraken come from, now you know. In our number 8 spot today we have the Saola. The Saola was first discovered in 1992 in Vietnam when a team of scientists discovered a skull with unusually long straight horns. This find ended up being the first large newly discovered mammal in the area in over 50 years. They are one of the rarest large mammals in the world, with the first living one being photographed for the first time in 1999 by a camera trap. There isn't a ton that is known about them, especially while they are in their natural habitats, but some things that are known is that they inhabit wet evergreen or forests in eastern and southeast Asia, preferring river valleys. They have been reported to be active in both the day and the night, but apparently prefer to rest during the heat of midday. There is little information about their reproduction, but as of right now, it is believed that they only birth single calves at a time. The Saula is currently critically endangered in part due to its restrictive habitat requirements, but also because of its aversion to humans, which totally makes sense. Of course, with habitat loss and human infringement, as well as them being hunted for their fur, things are unfortunately not looking very good for them. The good news is that steps are being done to hopefully help the species, but more can always be done. In our number 7 spot today we have the leafy sea dragon. If this was a list of cutest named animals, this one would certainly be near the top. Leafy sea dragon. How adorable is that? <laughs> These fish belong to the family that includes pipefish and seahorses, but they are the only species in their genus. The leafy sea dragon is most commonly found along the southern and western coasts of Australia, and they are very obviously named for their appearance. It would seem as though these guys would use these leafy protrusions to help propel them through the water, but that is not the case, and instead they are merely used as camouflage. These sea dragons are usually quite solitary, but they also have an incredible sense of direction. It was once thought that they didn't travel very very far, but it was later discovered that they actually travel several hundred miles but use this keen sense of direction to return to the same spots, which is actually very cool. In our number 6 spot today we have the Okapi. These animals are endemic to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and I truthfully knew next to nothing about them previously. As it turns out, despite their striped markings that would seemingly place them as relatives of the zebra, these guys are much more closely related to the giraffe. In fact, the giraffe and the Okapi are the only two living members of their animal family. These guys however are much smaller than a giraffe, growing to be around 5 feet tall. The males can be told from the females by their horn like things on their heads, while females have a hair whorl. These guys are usually only active in the daytime, but they still have the ability to have quite good night vision. One really interesting thing about them is that while they've been known to the locals for many many years, the Okapi wasn't known to the western world until the 20th century. Unfortunately they are currently endangered with the main threat being habitat habitat loss due to logging and human settlement, but more recently they are being threatened by poachers. In June of 2012, a gang of poachers attacked the headquarters of the Okapi Wildlife Reserve, killing 6 guards and other staff, as well as all 14 Okapis at their breeding center, which is just absolutely horrible. In our number 5 spot today we have the Mariana Snailfish. The Mariana Snailfish is a fish that is found quite deep in the Mariana Trench, at a range of 6,200 to 8,000 meters deep, or 20,000 to 26,500 feet. And as you may know, especially if you're a fan of this channel, the Mariana Trench is one of the most remote places that exists on our earth. One of these kinds of fish was once captured at a depth of 7,966 meters or 26,135 feet, and it is believed that this may be the record for a fish caught on the sea floor. This was an important catch too because it gave researchers a chance to get a look at and further their understanding of what anatomical, physiological, 
biological, molecular, and genetic adaptations are required for animals who make their home in this extreme environment. Some of the adaptations seen in this fish are things like their transparent skin that lacks pigment, they have certain organs and eggs that are enlarged, their muscles are thinner, and it seems as though they have either little or no ability to see, which makes a lot of sense considering how dark their habitat is. This obviously means that they must hunt for their prey using other senses to detect any movement around them. In our number 4 spot today we have the coconut crab. Ok, these big crabs are super weird to look at and that's just the truth. The coconut crab, also known as the robber crab or the palm thief, are a type of terrestrial hermit crab. In fact, these guys are so large that they are the largest terrestrial arthropods in the world as they can grow enough to weigh around 9 pounds and be 3 feet 3 inches or 1 meter in width. These crabs have been locally extinct from places with high human population, so that means that they can now make their homes on some of the most isolated islands in the world. These crabs are often associated with the coconut palm, despite coconut not being a large part of their diet, but this may be because the distribution of these crabs is similar to that of the coconut palm. In our number 3 spot today we have Chan's Megastick. This guy was discovered in 2008 and until 2016 it held the record for longest insect in the world. So little is known about these creatures because of the fact that there are only 6 known specimens in the entire world, all of which originated in Borneo. This could be due to how well they blend in with their environment as it truly can easily appear to be a stick or some kind of a leaf or vine. There is next to nothing known about the lifestyle or biology of the insect, but it is thought that they most likely live high in the canopies of the rainforest, which is just another reason they are so difficult to find. What is known is that they are vegetarian, and it is believed that they may reproduce similarly to other stick insects, which means that they would lay one single egg, which they then fling into the air. After the egg is flung, it lands on the forest floor to hatch in the soil. In our number 2 spot today we have the Cameroon scaly tail. This animal is a rodent species that is endemic to west central Africa, and it is one of the most mysterious on earth. That is because not only is it one of the most ancient mammals, but it is also extremely elusive. For years, scientists only knew it from fossils as well as scattered specimens, and it wasn't until 2016 when scientists were able to find one that had unfortunately passed away, but was fully intact in order to study. Members of the Zenkarella genus, which this one belongs to, are called living fossils because of the fact that they have barely evolved at all over the last 49 million years. These creatures are only around 15 million years younger than dinosaurs, which also means that they are 35 million years older than the oldest great apes. They've been around for longer than most other creatures on the planet, which is very cool, but it also makes you wonder why we know so little about them. Mammals are one of the best researched taxonomic classes of all animals, so it really is unprecedented that we don't really know when these animals are active, what they eat, where they spend most of their time, it all remains so much of a mystery. These animals look a lot like a squirrel, but under the bushy fur of its tail, you can find scales. In our number 1 spot today we have the Mexican burrowing toad. These guys are a super interesting creature as they are the only species in their genus. They can be found from South Texas through to Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, Honduras and El Salvador to Nicaragua and Costa Rica. They also once used to be more widespread and could be found even as far north as Canada, but that changed about 30 million years ago. These amphibians can be found in burrows beneath the surface of the earth for most of the year except for the time after the first heavy rainfalls of the year when they emerge for mating. Because of their time spent underground, their physiology reflects the adaptation that was necessary for this environment. When they emerged from their underground habitat, they can be located by the sound of the male's mating call, and they are easier to spot as, during this, they are also inflating their bodies. These animals are said to be the most evolutionarily distinct amphibian species on earth. Like apparently they are so unique that a fruit bat, polar bear, killer whale, kangaroo, and human all have more in common than this toad does with other amphibians. That seems so crazy. Number 10. The Big Fin Squid. This deep sea creature will probably be in your nightmares tonight. Looking like a mix between spaghetti and the hair I pulled out of my shower drain this morning, this is the Big Fin Squid. This creature was discovered only about 20 years ago and was first mainly noticed when a group of researchers had been diving to a shipwreck and seen the terrifying squid instead. It's known to live miles beneath the water's surface and seems to just float around in the water. They can grow around 6 meters long, with most of that being in its tentacles and arms, which scientists really don't understand. As the squid appears to just drift around, 
around, they're not really sure how it actually uses its tentacles. One thing they do know, however, is that these spaghetti noodles have microscopic suckers on them, which scientists theorize they use to catch prey that bump into them, and they then drag their meal along the sea floor. Number 9. The Immortal Jellyfish If any of you out there are planning on discovering how to live forever, the so-called immortal jellyfish may be your ticket to success. When the jellyfish eggs hatch, they grow to full size in just a few weeks, but they don't grow very large. The average size of one of these creatures is only about the size of your pinky nail. So what makes these tiny little guys unique from all the other species of jellyfish out there? Whenever they become damaged or even begin to starve, they reverse back in the developmental process. If you think about the life cycle of a frog that you probably studied in school, they go backwards in this cycle, reverting back to their early stage of a polyp. They can then grow up again, genetically identical to the jellyfish that it used to be, or still is. They can also create clones of themselves, so while one may die, that same creature might still be floating around somewhere. Scientists are desperately looking into this process and how they do it, as they want to look into the medical applications of the jellyfish's abilities. Number 8. The Yeti Crab this fuzzy looking crab was only recently discovered in the mid 2000s and it's got scientists baffled. They were discovered just south of Easter Island and appear to thrive around hydrothermal vents underwater. It's believed that they eat mollusks around the vents and also appear to grow bacteria on their arms by holding them over top of it so that they can then eat the bacteria later. These animals are also pretty stuck where they are. They are virtually blind due to their deep sea location and only seem to be able to live within very close proximity to the vents. If they wander even just a few meters away from the area, they're highly likely to die. Because of this, the yeti crabs are typically seen hanging out in massive piles, sometimes up to 600 crabs per square meter, making pictures of these groups of crabs a little unsettling to look at. Not much is known about these guys yet, so it might be a while before we get some solid answers about just how they came to evolve to survive next to these hydrothermal vents. Number 7. Rangomorph this next one probably isn't one you've ever heard about or seen when you've been walking around. That's because this is a fossil that scientists are working hard to try and understand. It's referred to as an Ediacaran and has had researchers confused for years. So here's what we do know about this prehistoric creature. They were largely immobile and could grow to sizes larger than humans. It's especially unique as it's one of the first large multicellular organisms that seem to exist before the first real animals ever evolved. A scan of the fossils allowed researchers to look into the physical makeup of this creature. It had strange internal structures, including its cone-shaped central trunk and the six fern-like fronds extending out from it to form a primitive kind of skeleton. There's still a lot to do to figure out just what exactly this creature was, and it's hard to figure out as it disappeared an estimated 500 140 million years ago. Number 6. Crows I know what you're thinking. Crows? Yes. Crows. While they may seem like simple avians that you hear squawking away during the day, there's a lot to these birds that scientists don't really seem to understand. The main one being that these guys are mean. Some people know that crows are extremely smart and can be trained to do tasks, as well as having built in problem solving capabilities. Well, it looks like they are putting their brains to use. It was discovered in a recent study that crows hold grudges. They can remember the faces of people who captured them and will still be mad about it up to two years later. Another interesting fact about that is that they will even pass on these feelings to their friends and family members and encourage them to attack specific people as well. So I think it's in the best interest of all of us to not go out and antagonize any crows. Number 5. The Platypus If you grew up watching Phineas and Ferb, then you're probably familiar with the mammal known as a platypus. But you're probably not familiar with just how strange and unique these duck beavers actually are. When looking at pictures, you might notice that a platypus is not actually turquoise like Perry, but is actually just brown. Well, if you put a platypus under an ultraviolet light, it will actually grow a blue-green color. But unfortunately, a cool hat doesn't immediately appear as well. They are probably best known for being one of only a handful of mammals that lay eggs, and for having a powerful deadly venom on their back legs. One other thing that you may not have known about these guys is that they give sharks a run for their money. 
And no, not in fighting each other, but I would pay to see that. Instead, it's in the way that they hunt. Even though they're mammals, they mostly hunt underwater, and they close off all their senses while they do so, only using their electrical signals and powers of electrosensitivity in order to find their prey. Number 4. The Argentine Ant If you think it's cool that you have friends all across the globe thanks to the internet, just wait until you hear about the massive global colony of the Argentine Ant. They have managed to spread to every country except Antarctica and exist in massive underground colonies, even holding the record for largest known ant colony in the world, spanning across 6,000 kilometers. These invasive species have become a massive problem across the world as they appear to have been waging wars with different species of ants, taking over their ecosystems faster than you can say colonization. Due to the super colonies that these ants are capable of creating, they have strength in numbers. Numbers, and their population just seems to be continuing to grow. When Argentine ants from the main large colonies were pitted against each other to see if they would fight, they actually seemed to recognize each other and engaged in a greeting. So let's just hope they're not planning on banding together and taking over Earth anytime soon. Number 3. Cows I know, I know, everybody has seen a cow before, so what's so weird about it? Well, cows do in fact have one large mystery amongst them that scientists are struggling to figure out. If you've ever driven past a cow field and seen that all the cows seem to be facing in the same direction, there's a reason for that. It looks to some researchers that cows are magnetic. They seem to prefer to stand and graze in accordance to electromagnetic fields, always seeming to stand in a north or south direction. Researchers took satellite pictures of tons of cows in pastures and noticed the similarities in the way that they all seem to align themselves. They also ruled out any other reasons for the cows standing in such a way, such as avoiding the heat, wind, or other elements. I would also choose to argue that aliens put magnets in the cows in order to more easily lift them up into their UFOs. But hey, that's just my theory. Number 2. The Greenland Shark There are tons of different species of sharks out there, and one of the apparently more abnormal and unique ones is the Greenland Shark. They're a fairly new find, only first being photographed in 1995, and as a result we really don't know much about them and have had some trouble explaining some of their behaviors. They can become the size of a great white, able to grow more than 20 feet long and weigh more than 2,500 pounds. They also seem to live a very long time, with the current estimate of their lifespan being around 400 years, and only seeming to reach maturity at the age of around 150. As they live in deep waters, they are often mostly blind and rely on their other senses, which is lucky for them as they can often fall victim to a parasite in their eyes, rendering the organs pretty useless. Their skin is also poisonous and can only be eaten after properly preparing it for months, a process which includes burying the meat in the ground. Round, though I'm not sure why you'd want to go to such long lengths for a bite of shark anyways. Number 1. The Axolotl Probably one of the cutest creatures on this list, we're finishing it off with the axolotl. Fans of Minecraft are probably familiar with this little guy. The creature has many strange abilities which have left many people baffled. One of the most notable is probably its ability to completely regenerate lost limbs, as well as its heart, lungs, spinal cord, and even parts of its brain, and the tissue is regrown without even leaving any scarring behind. Scientists are also especially interested in this creature because they are incredibly resistant to cancer, and they're hoping to find a way to harness the axolotl's natural defense to the disease. They are only able to be found in Mexico, and despite having no major predators, are incredibly endangered, mostly having issues with other creatures eating up their resources. And the reason these guys are so cute is because they have a condition that allows them to keep most of their larval features, which causes them to look pretty similar to big tadpoles. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Maraxis gigas. Just a couple of months ago, in the northern Patagonia area of Argentina, researchers uncovered a new dinosaur species that is being called Maraxis gigas. This gigantic carnivorous creature is said to have been similar to a T-Rex in that it had quite a large head and tiny little arms. The remains of this creature were actually discovered over a period of a few years, and in the end, the name scientists chose was after one of the dragons in the Song of Ice and Fire book that inspired Game of Thrones. Clearly, the dinosaur was discovered before the scientists saw the finale. The remains of this dinosaur indicate that these guys lived to be about 40 
45 years of age and that they weighed about 4 metric tons and lived somewhere from 90 million to 100 million years ago. In our number 9 spot today we have Jacopil Kanekura. Recently in South America, scientists have found fossils of small prickly dinosaurs that might just represent an entire lineage of dinosaurs that were previously undiscovered and unknown to science. This species is an armored dinosaur that lived during the Cretaceous era, which was the last era of the dinosaurs, about 97 to 94 million years ago. These dinosaurs were relatively small, weighing only about as much as a house cat. Imagine instead of having a cat, having a little spiky dinosaur running around instead. These guys had a row of spikes running from their neck to their tail, and they grew to be an estimated 5 feet or 1.5 meters long, and rather than a small but mighty carnivore, these guys much preferred to chow down on the plant life in the area they lived. In our number 8 spot today we have Embiosaurus rathi. This discovery came over the course of two archaeological digs, one in 2017 and one in 2019, after which the researchers responsible were able to uncover a mostly intact skeleton which is astonishing. The skeleton is said to have belonged to a new long necked dinosaur. Other than the fact that the skeleton was intact, what made this discovery so remarkable is that it is the oldest dinosaur skeleton ever found in Africa as it was found in northern Zimbabwe. This dinosaur is believed to have grown to be about 6 feet long with its tail and it weighed somewhere from 20 to 65 pounds. It is thought that the remains that these scientists uncovered might be as old as 230 million years. In our number 7 spot today we have the White Rock Spinosaurid. Recently on the Isle of Wight, researchers found bones including a huge pelvic bone and tail vertebrae that may belong to a newly discovered species of dinosaur, perhaps one of the largest predators ever to roam Europe. One of the leaders of the study said, quote, judging from some of the dimensions, it appears to represent one of the largest predatory dinosaurs ever found in Europe, maybe even the biggest yet known. He further added, quote, it's a shame it's only from a small amount of material, but these are enough to show it was an immense creature. As of now, these remains have been nicknamed the White Rock Spinosaurid, named after the geological layer of earth that it was found in. Spinosaurids, which these remains are thought to belong to, are two-legged creatures with crocodile sort of faces. These remains would have been from a carnivorous creature that grew to be more than 32 feet in length and that lived about 125 million years ago. In our number 6 spot today, we have a feathery dinosaur. Later in 2020, a team of paleontologists announced that they had found quite an unusual new dinosaur from Brazil. This feathery dinosaur is said to have been the first of its kind to be found, and right now it is thought to have been a carnivorous creature about the size of a chicken. There is evidence, however, that different from a chicken, these guys may have had a stunning these guys may have had stunning, colorful feathers and mating displays that would rival today's peacocks and other birds of paradise. They are also thought to have potentially had two stiff ribbon like feathers sticking out from each of their shoulders. Right now, there's a little drama surrounding this discovery though, because although this fossil and the creature would have lived in Brazil, our modern discovery came in Germany, which poses the question. How did it get there? Apparently, there are some conflicting accounts of how this fossil was transported to Brazil, and this exportation may have been illegal. So, there was even a social media campaign to have the fossil brought back to Brazil, but the State Museum of Natural History Karlsruhe refused. So, everyone's pretty mad about that. There's some dinosaur tea for you in case anyone asks what's the latest in dinosaur drama. In our number 5 spot today, we have the Yushisaurus Kopchikai. Earlier this year, it was announced that a stocky armored dinosaur with quote distinctive plating was found in southwestern China. This discovery was incredibly important because scientists believe that this might mark the earliest well preserved armored dinosaur ever found in China. Armored dinosaurs are exceptionally interesting, and while there are many fossils of these kinds of creatures from the late Jurassic period up until the end of dinosaurs, there really aren't a lot from the earlier periods, which is why scientists are particularly interested in these fossils. The remains of this dinosaur show experts that it was medium sized, covered in sharp spines, and was quite sturdy and stocky, especially in comparison to the other species it would have lived beside. In our number 4 spot today we have the winged reptile. Back in 2017 in Scotland, sticking out from some limestone in the water was the fossil of a prehistoric creature that was just waiting to be discovered. Upon further research, it was realized that these were the remains of one of the largest 
largest flying reptiles ever found that dates back 170 million years ago. The estimated wingspan of this creature was somewhere from 2.5 to 3 meters, although the remains that were found were that of a juvenile who would have still been actively growing. The creature was named after the Gaelic words for winged reptile, and this discovery was fascinating because it changed what we knew about the timeline and history of winged reptiles. It was previously thought that these kinds of creatures didn't reach the massive size of this one until roughly 25 million years later, but this discovery of course showed us that that simply was not true. This guy is now believed to have been one of the first big flying creatures that roamed the planet. In our number 3 spot today we have the Dragon of Death. This massive prehistoric creature has been dubbed the Dragon of Death as it once hunted prey from the sky around 86 million years ago. With its wings fully extended, this creature is said to have measured a massive 9 meters or 30 feet from one wingtip to the other. If that wasn't enough, it is also said that this species is as tall as a giraffe, so in just size alone, this creature is terrifying. While scientists believe that this creature spent most of its time on the ground, they also believe that it may have been one of the first predators to use its wings to hunt prey as it lived and flew in a time before the evolution of birds. In our number 2 spot today we have the apex predator. So if you're like me and have a pretty basic understanding of dinosaurs, when someone asks what one of the most terrifying dinosaurs was, I'd say a T-Rex. And while this is partially true, it is also true that for tens of millions of years, T-Rexes were tiny and it was other gigantic creatures who were really winning when it came to the whole apex predator thing. At some point though there was a switch where T. rexes gained the coveted title they have today, and researchers still aren't quite sure exactly how this happened or when it happened. But they did recently discover a new species that just might help piece some things together. This new dinosaur was identified by a bone found in a 90 million year old rock in Uzbekistan, and it is a creature that is thought to have been about 30 feet long. The dinosaur, which I'm not even going to attempt to say the name of, maybe we can have it somewhere up on the screen and you'll see why, like Ulagubegasaur Uzbekistanisensis like that's my best guess, was larger than T-Rexes in the same habitat, but at some point they began to give up their habitats to T-Rexes, and right now scientists are hoping that this new discovery might just give them a little insight as to why. In our number one spot today, we have Australotitan cooperensis. Researchers in Australia have confirmed that they recently have found the remains of the largest dinosaur ever to live in Australia. This creature was massive, being said to measure about 80 to 100 feet long and 16 to 21 feet tall at its hip, while weighing somewhere between 25 to 81 tons. These impressive measurements land this creature a spot in the list of top 15 largest dinosaurs ever discovered. These fossilized bones were first excavated from the ground back in 2006 and 2007, but it wasn't until more recent years that these findings were announced, as it takes years of analysis to confirm these kinds of things. These creatures would have lived about 92 to 96 million years ago, at a time when Queensland was still connected to Antarctica, which has made researchers hypothesize that there might be more of these gigantic fossils beneath the Earth in Antarctica as well. Starting off number 10 now, we have the alligator snapping turtle. Look at these things. They look like the result of asking a 10 year old to draw what things 100 million years ago looked like. Now, surprisingly, they wouldn't be far off with that. You see, these creatures are mainly found in the southeast of the United States. They belong to a family with a long fossil history going right back to the late Cretaceous era from 66 to 72 million years ago. Ever since then, these 400 pound turtles have been just doing their thing, and their thing is mainly just being the heaviest freshwater turtle in the world. They have a large, heavy head and a long, thick shell with three dorsal ridges of large scales. It's no wonder that some people have confused them for actual living dinosaurs. Because of their name, most people stay well clear of these creatures, you don't want a snapping turtle to snap your finger off. However, scientists have found that snapping turtles bite about as hard as humans do, and not nearly as hard as other turtles. If you've ever been bitten by another person, you'll know it can be painful, but hey, at least you still have your finger at the end of it, I hope. Next up at number 9 now, we have the goblin shark. These are a rare species of deep sea shark, and if I'm honest, they're pretty ugly, aren't they? I mean, look at them. Their scientific name is actually Mitsukurina Otsutoni, that's a Japanese name named after the Tengu, a mythical creature often depicted with a long nose and very red face, a bit like a goblin. This species is an astonishing 125 million years old. Around that time, human ancestors looked a bit like small rodents. So yeah, 
these things are very old. They're so old that scientists sometimes call them a living fossil. They're really interesting creatures. They have a flat snout lined with openings that serve as electrical sensors that track down their food. You see the fish they eat give off electrical impulses whenever they move that the goblin shark picks up on. They're big but sneaky, easily able to catch their prey off its guard. Whatever they're doing, it's working and they've been around for a very long time. Moving on to number 8 now, we have the giant stingray. This may look fake, I promise you it's not. Most of the time when you hear the word giant before an animal's name, it probably died out a long time ago. The giant scorpion, giant centipede, that sort of thing. The giant stingray didn't get the memo, it's still alive and kicking and stinging. These things can be over 6 feet across, 16 feet long and weigh up to 1300 pounds. If that isn't scary enough, they also have a 15 inch serrated poison spike protruding from their tail. The good news, if there is any, is that the giant stingray is generally not aggressive towards humans. If you do annoy one though, it's serious. Their sting is sheathed in toxic mucus and is capable of piercing bone. They're normally found in Indochina, Borneo and across Southeast Asia. Their desire for seclusion is probably the main reason that modern science didn't even record them until 1852 and perhaps the reason they've stayed alive for so long. Next up on number 6 now, we have the Triops. There's no mistaking these, they definitely look prehistoric. Looking at a Triops really is like looking at a fossil come to life. They're crustaceans that have a fossil record reaching back 200 million years ago. Honestly, I'm going to say it now, that puts anything on this list to shame in terms of age. 200 million years old. The dinosaurs only went extinct about 65 million years ago, which is practically last Thursday compared to just how long the Triops has been around. For such a long lived species though, the individual members don't really survive that long at all, just 90 days once they reach their adult stage. An interesting thing to note about the Triops is that their eggs are probably a lot tougher than them. An adult triops can survive temperatures of about 34 degrees Celsius for 24 hours or 40 degrees for 2 hours. Not bad. Their eggs, however, are something else. The eggs enter a state of extended diapause when dry, meaning they can tolerate temperatures of up to 98 degrees Celsius for up to 16 hours. That's just below boiling point. Unlike some of the others on our list, the triops are not endangered and can actually be bought as pets for aquariums at home. One of the product's names for them is Aquasaurus, a fitting name for such an ancient looking creature. Moving on to number 5 now, we have the Alligator Gar. That sounds like I just mispronounced the end of it there, but no, it really is the alligator gar. Despite the alligator part of its name, this is actually a fish. It lives in fresh water in North America and has done for a very long time. Fossil records show this fish is over a hundred million years old. This has earned it the nickname of a living fossil. They're big things too, reaching up to 10 feet in length and weighing up to 300 pounds. It can live up to 50 years old as well. And let's get back to the alligator part of that name, shall we? As you can see from the pictures, they earned their name from having a broad snout and dual rows of sharp teeth. Unlike alligators though, they pose no threat to humans. They're slow moving animals and feed mainly on small fish, small mammals and insects. For me though, it's their scales that are most interesting. They're dark olive ganoid scales. That means they're bone like and in the shape of a diamond. They're also big enough to be used as arrowheads and hard enough that they will cause sparks when struck with an axe. You will have to take my word on that though. Please don't go and attack these fish with an axe. Moving on to number four now, we have the lamprey. These are some of the creepiest looking things I have ever seen. They're the stuff of nightmares. They belong to a family of jawless fish. Instead of a jaw, they have this toothed funnel like sucking mouth. They range in size from five to 40 inches in length. Imagine a three and a half foot long one of these crawling up your leg in a river. Luckily, they don't really go for humans, they go for other fish. Their preferred method of attack is to just eat their way into the side of the fish and just keep going until they've eaten them from the inside out. Lovely stuff. They're called fish but really they're sometimes not even considered vertebrates. You could say they don't have a backbone. No offence, lampreys. Next up at number 2 now we have the frilled shark. We've got another shark on the list now and just like the last one we talked about, it's been around for a very long time, about 95 million years. This thing is just strange looking. It looks out of this world, at least the modern world we live in today. The frilled shark lurks in the deep. It's been caught as deep as 5,150 feet down. That might be good news for most swimmers because these things look vicious. Frilled sharks have upwards of 300 pronged teeth which act as sharp hooks to trap struggling prey. They have an insane ability to open their mouths extremely wide and can swallow things up to one and a half times their length. If these things sound a bit creepy then you could try avoiding them, but it would be difficult. If I'm honest, they are everywhere. They've been found in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, 
off the coast of Norway, Scotland, Ireland, France, Morocco, Australia and Japan. They may not come to the surface very often, but that doesn't mean they're not there. Coming at number two now, we have the giant salamander. The giant Chinese salamander has been plodding around on Earth in basically the same form for about 30 million years. It's the largest salamander and largest amphibian in the world, reaching up to 5.9 feet in length. As you might expect from the name, it's mainly found in the Rocky Mountain streams and lakes of China. Now, despite surviving for this long, it's now classed as critically endangered in the wild due to habitat loss, pollution, and overconsumption. Its numbers are thought to have dropped more than 80% since the 1950s. When it comes to how creepy this creature is, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is that they pose no real threat to humans. Giant Chinese salamanders are nearly blind and feed mainly on smaller salamanders, worms, and crayfish. The bad news is they make pretty creepy noises. They've been known to make barking, whining, hissing and crying sounds. Some of these noises sound so much like the crying of a young human child that they are now known in the Chinese language as the infant fish. Yeah, no thanks. Sounds like a horror movie. And finally at number one now we have the Tuatara. These reptiles can only be found in one place in the whole world, New Zealand. They owe their name to the Maori language. Tuatara translates to peaks on the back. 200 million years ago they used to be one of many similar species that lived all over. Now they're the only ones left. For this reason they have fascinated science as they provide a unique window into how reptiles would have looked hundreds of millions of years ago. They come in greenish, brown and grey colours. That makes it sound like there's some sort of toys you can buy. Anyway, they measure up to 31 inches from head to tail tip and can weigh up to 3 pounds. They have two rows of teeth on the upper jaw overlapping one row on the lower jaw and they're the only species in the world that have teeth like that. For many years there were thought to be none of them left in the wild of New Zealand due to habitat loss. In 2008 though a tuatara nest was uncovered with a hatchling inside. It's thought to be the first case of a successful breeding in the wild for over 200 years. That's good news. Nice. Thank you.